Greetings! Welcome to Terror Prime Live! Darth Anonymous here. We're not joining me. Uh, today we're doing part two of our uh, translating real weapon arts and martial arts into lightsabers. Um, we've got uh, on our panel, we've got two of our learners in exile here. Uh, Eric, how you doing, Eric? Very well, thanks. Uh, how are you tonight? Very good, very good. And, of course, Darth Arcanus. Gary, how's it going? Doing great, thank you, Master. And yourself? Not bad. Welcome aboard, gentlemen. Glad okay. Make it tonight. Yes. Make and um, make it. yes, <laughs> right, right. After, uh, yeah. Well, it was still. Anyway, we'll 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 get to it here. Yeah. And and we'll make up for it. In case you haven't noticed, I'm I'm sporting my new outfit by Twin Roses. So. Go check them out. Anyway, come back to the white side. Yes. Well, yeah, well, we'll see. Right. You always gotta be incognito, right? Right. Anyway, uh, yes. So uh, we were talking last week about taking uh, certain weapon arts, martial arts, that kind of thing, and then applying them to creating forms of lightsaber. Um, we here at TPLA are using the seven forms of lightsaber as our template. You can use that. You can go off onto your own uh, path. That's all great and everything. Um, but we'll kind of I'll, I'll, I'll let you in on some, some of the things that we figured out as we've been doing this because there are, there are definitely some issues that probably are going to pop up again and again and again as people as more people start start doing this. Um, last week we talked a lot about um, the difference in physics, right? So there's a physics difference between using a, a flat blade and a round blade. Um, and we showed the kind of the origins of some of our forms and, and that kind of thing. And we'll kind of continue that and then we'll be able to uh, demonstrate um, more about what we were kind of talking about that way. So, We'll get to it. Um, do you have anything to you want to start out with? Um, uh, no, no, I, I, I did watch the show um, after that, so I, I, I feel like I'm most, mostly caught up. But I, I don't have any, any place in particular to, to start with. Uh, the, all the information that uh, that you and, and the rest of the panel went over was, it was pretty it was pretty well covered on, okay. on all fronts. So. Okay, good. Well, okay, so um, as we're getting into... Um, let, let, let's, let, let's start getting into more of the, the I don't know, pitfalls or, or things that you're going to come into contact with um, as, as you're doing it. Like, if you're coming from some sort of martial art background, whenever you look at any of the material from Star Wars, you're going to obviously start making parallels with your own training and everything like that. And that's exactly what you want to do. Um, if you... Um, <clears throat> uh, if, if you um, are coming from a weapons type background, it's going to be a little bit easier. If you're coming from a uh, barehanded kind of thing, you're going to be dealing a lot more with philosophy. And then if you're coming from a... This, there's this new kind of thing out there where it's a barehanded art, but they're practicing weapons. You, f you find that a lot in Kung Fu and Chinese martial arts and, and other things where it's not necessarily a full weapons study or, 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 or anything like that, but they do uh, incorporate weapons into their training, and then sometimes people will take that kind of stuff. Um, An emphasis on developing basic basic skills, good good technique, good form, and then adding weapons into what you've already been practicing at the end. So that, that's the right. Idea. Yeah. Right, right, exactly. So the way we've taken it is we've taken it from a weapons perspective rather than a empty handed perspective. So you start out with weapons. You don't need to have any bare handed experience to do weapons. That's a that's a that's a common myth that's that's spread around that bare handed will help weapons, and it can. It, it won't always. I use, uh, there's a lot of people I know who are very, very good barehanded, but throw a sword in their hand and they're helpless. Um, they really don't know how to use it. Um, so... It's, you could look at it as, as, as having another tool in your toolbox. If you have some empty-handed techniques, great. 
Right. They're, they're, they're there if the opportunity arises. Right. And we'll go through, you know, some of that kind of stuff. Um, so, uh, do you guys have anything you guys want to start out with um, as far as questions before we get into it here? No. Quite anxious to see the uh, quite anxious to see the steel. Oh, get up! All right. Um, so, um, let's see where we should start. I know we talked about a lot about what you give up. This is an omnidirectional. It's essentially a round. To say omnidirectional is a fancy way of saying it is round. Okay, um, so it is a round staff of light or of, uh, plasma or whatever you want to call it or anything like that, but it's essentially a stick. You can, you can strike anywhere along the length of the weapon. Right, exactly, and you're not going to deal too much with edge position or stuff like that. Um, when you're dealing with a weapon, if you do this... Okay, we have flat, okay, and being able to do a flat, and even if you're using a saber here, you have a, you have a flat, okay, which means it's, it's thinner on one side, like that, than it is this way, okay. And what you can do is that when you make contact with another person's weapon, you can use that to maneuver, to... Uh, to uh, um, kind of flip the the, uh, the 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 person's weapon kind of out of out of range, right? Um, <clears throat> you don't have that ability when you're dealing with a round with a round object, right? So there's going to be certain techniques which will be more artistic and more uh, more mechanical then they're going to be functional um, so whereas with our guards if I come in like this as you see it's that changing of my flat to edge that really makes that useful when I come down here I'm still going to come down here when I've got a sit when I've got a light sit right but there's no reason I necessarily need to be right here I could simply be in this guard as well, which means I would have just taken it over this way. And that's fine, right? But when we're dealing with some of our stuff, and you see us coming into this this way, th there is another reason for that, though, um, what you will lose when you hit, have edge position. Um, there are certain body mechanics that are going to be easier to get your head around if you're using a flat object. Uh, especially like uh, orbits. We were talking about one just before we started the show, right? Um, people have a problem with this particular stuff right there. They either do they do one of two things. <clears throat> they let go and let it rotate around in their thumb like that, okay? Or they break their wrist way back like that, okay? What you really need to do is just dip your elbow past your center line and go into what's basically a drop pair, like that. Okay. Now that's easier to see when you have a flat blade because I come down like this and then I'm putting that edge against my arm kind of as I bring it around that way. Okay. Now, you don't have that cue when you have a cue, essentially. Um, <clears throat> so that's something to, to, to kind of think about yeah, as, as far as how, how, how these translate. Going off on a slight tangent, I think that one of the things that you lose a lot of is the tactile contact with the blade of the weapon. Yes. Um, with, a, with, a steel, with a steel blade, you actually spend some amount of time with eating in contact with the various parts of your body, depending on where you are in relation to your partner. Right. Um, which you would, lightsaber being what it is, can't do that. Right. Yep. Um, uh, we'll, we'll go into that when we start talking about like half sorting and grabbing the blade, the things that, well, we can, we can go into that pretty soon here. Um, 
But so that, that's the first thing that you're going to give up that we noticed is, is getting that flat in there. Now that doesn't mean that these motions become completely useless. When we're here and in contact, right, if I do this, right, it'll still parry just as well. It won't push them off, right? But it's a round object, which means it's going to be very, very good at this kind of stirring parry like that, okay? So if he's coming in like that, and I just come around like that, you see? So in that way, we can, and it's one of the reasons we can put a lot of these videos out, because we don't have to worry about these really fine details of edge position and stuff like that. If you get into the um, LX program, you'll get that kind of detail, um, and trials are coming out. So uh, start practicing. Right, we'll get into that. Keep here. practicing. Right. Um, yes. So uh, yeah. So the the, may, the the physics of the weapon is going to be a little bit different from from this one to to that one. That being said, most of it's going to be the same. Most of the techniques are going to transfer extremely well, and that's one of the reasons we fell in love with these things is because we're able to do things that we weren't able to do because they're safe. Because you also, um, when, you're, when you've got a round object like this and it's a little bit more flexible, you don't have all that force coming down into an edge, so you, you're not going to hurt people even as much as with a wooden object. Right. Even even using all the appropriate safety gear, using s steel, aluminum, even wooden weapons, mm -hmm. um, the the prospect for injury is going to be a little bit higher than a flexible plastic tube. Right. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, do we have any questions before we move on? Nothing from the forums or YouTube. Okay. Okay. All right. So you were mentioning um, one thing about uh, with with the differences, um, not being able to touch the blade. Huge thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now this is something that is funny because when you're teaching actual sword art, you have to tell the beginner you do, you know you don't have to worry about it. It's not a lightsaber. Right. Just because it's sharp doesn't mean it's automatically going to cut you. It's a machine. It needs to be used in a particular way to do that thing. So you end up trying to get people to touch the blade a lot. Um, with lightsaber, we can just skip all that because you're not allowed to touch the blade at all. And, but that does bring up another challenge and one that's probably more to the excitement of the game for people who may have done steel weapons and stuff like this because now we're not allowed grabbing the other person's weapon, grabbing our weapon, half sorting, that kind of thing. And it becomes much more dangerous when we come into the bind. Yeah. There, there's just, there, there's, there are so many applications for hand-on blade app, uh, techniques and to have those gone. In, in, in one way, it's kind of freeing because now you're, you aren't worrying about those at points where you would normally be. Right. Um, but it is also, you know, it's, they're fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we'll, we'll show you what, what you mean here. Um, do you have a feather with you? I do. Good. We will just show you a quick little demonstration of what we mean by half sorting. Okay. <clears throat> so when we get into the bind, we've done a show on the bind, but when we get into the bind, we get into here. Okay. So we've got our weapons kind of pushing up against each other, and now we're going to begin kind of rotating around each other, trying to get over each other so that we can get a strike in there while preventing them from doing the same thing. Okay. Now at some point, I can reach up, grab his weapon, and pull it aside if I want to. Okay. I can also grab my weapon and pull it around like that. Okay, um, 
show one where you're using it to we, we can also then shorten the lever so that we can get more you know pushing power you do that one here so if I'm here there and if he comes here to the to the throat boom okay now if you notice do that again I have my blade right up against his wrist with a lightsaber well we both get it <laughs> since, yeah. since we've reached a point where motion has generally stopped I can go ahead and make contact with his blade right here right plus right down here at the strong it's not sharp right it's it's meant to it's meant to break it's meant to be kind of a pummeler right so it's you're not going to be just by touching your blade to somebody using steel it's, it's not going to do it you have to do it with sufficient force right and that's why we do the half sorting like that okay <clears throat> um, you can all, you I mean you could do all kinds of stuff I mean you could be if like this, you can bring it up and over him. I mean, we. I mean, and this is stuff that you see in competition. It's not stuff that you it, that, that's like eh, nah, nobody would ever be able to do that. There's there's an extensive amount of uh, information on half sorting techniques. Yes, yes, and um, half sorting, disarms, all of these things um, kind of fall into the same categories a lot of times. So you'll you'll see that it's like. When the fight comes in, you're there, and it's just like, kill or be killed. Grab the other person's weapon, right? Drop yours. Ah! <laughs> Bash them in the skull until they stop. Um, that's how things work, <laughs> <laughs> right? Now, these techniques, of course, of course are, are out of bounds for us because we can't touch our blade. Um, uh, the other, but we can kind of, use these principles and use half sorting techniques as ways to uh, see different uh, different applications of it without actually grabbing the blade. So if we're here now if I do one of these where I'm bringing it down here obviously I'm not going to do that because he's going to He's going to get me, right? What I can do, though, is I can use his blade as a pivot, right, and bring it down, which is going to then open up the upper the upper portions, right? Uh, what was another one that we did? Um, right, yes, there we go. So <clears throat> if we're here, the same thing here. He's going to use that same point to come around and push it down. This is the stuff that's a lot in the gym. So the form five stuff, right? So while we can't do those very things, right? I can't, right, he can't do that. That stings. Right? <laughs> Even if he was able to do that to his own blade because wow. I've got a saber, it, well, you know, now if I had a real steel sword, I wouldn't be able to generate sufficient force to really do a good wound there, right? I would have to figure out some way of, of, of adding some force to it. With this, I don't. I merely have to drag it across the area. I, so. I, I, an analogy popped into my head is if you think of using a steel sword with the blades coated with poison. Right, right. I don't. I don't think it's very. Or if it's it's, it's, it, it's red hot. Yeah. Right. Fresh off the forge. Get Fresh off the door. forge. Yeah. Still glowing. <laughs> Probably be hotter for the person holding it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So we get into that kind of thing where woo, almost lost it there. Um, <clears throat> where uh, we're doing the half sorting stuff. That's going to bring us into the other big thing. Um, which is not so much of a big thing because we know that there are people that produce uh, lightsabers that have cross guards, but we're going to talk about using a cross guard. Um, now I have both a Chinese and a Western style 
um, weapon here, so we can show you both. Um, real quick. Where do you want to start? We'll go. I'll, I'll start with this. So we'll start with um, basic cross guard technique, right? And it's pretty, pretty simple. Here, and then lock it up right in the cross guard. Couldn't really be any simpler. Now, having it wide means that you have a lot of coverage. I don't have to be right in there, right? But the fact of the matter is, is I want it right in there. Even if I connect out here, I want it sliding in right there because I want to keep this point between my two, my weapon and his weapon steady because wherever he moves it, I can then block it. If he moves it down, here's where I've got my strike there. If he moves it up, right, I can come underneath, okay? But, again, I'm locking it in with this cross guard right here. Do um, you have another one? Um, cross guard. No, I mean that's. I think that's the foundation of everything. When, whenever, whenever you, right. whenever you're here in the bind, and whether you're getting up here or for the cross guard, it's. You know, I, I liken it to the sword has a thong. Right. So you can use your sword to grab your opponent's sword and manipulate it. Right. And can control where to control its placement, control its control the direction of travel. Right. Um, it it makes a lot of uh, redirection techniques much much easier. Yes. Um, it also provides a little bit of coverage for your hand, so that when you're in a melee going back and forth, you will not get as many... I'd, I'd go a step further and say it's paramount to protecting your hands. Um, with, without, the cross, without the cross guard, a lot, a lot of long sword techniques would end up with somebody's hands getting, fingers getting chopped off. Um, but that's based on the, the techniques and the principles in European long sword. Right, Chinese long sword. It's a little because, because the weapon evolved a little differently. Um, the techniques are a little bit different. Right. So the cross guard here is much smaller in a Chinese. Chinese. See, we showed it last week, but so we've got the difference between them right there. Okay. So we're going to use the same principle here, right? <clears throat> But now I don't have so much of the coverage. I have enough, right? But what I want instead of that kind of thing is I want the ability to simply move through so that I can come out, okay? <clears throat> Here I come up, and I'm using, again, using that as the pivot, right? So this is, this is where I'm not only manipulating the weapon, but I'm manipulating his movement. So if I want him to go back, I'm pushing at that spot, right? If I want him to think that he's pushing me back, I'm going to bring it in like this, okay? Um, using here, coming up over the top, you see? This is still here. Now, again, we're using, if we're using lightsaber, we have to then... Well, we'll get into that here. We have to then move our, our point. But if I can get it here, right there, I can still oops, manipulate it uh, a good deal for, um, you know, for what it is. I don't need a huge cross guard. Now, the nice thing about it is, for me, is that that's probably more similar to lightsaber because lightsabers don't have cross guards, <laughs> um, generally speaking. I'm sure people are making them, but there then becomes a, uh, a, a kind of a problem with canon. We get the argument of uh, what, what would you make a cross guard of that would, that would work with a lightsaber, and if you can make it out of that thing, why not just make it in a suit of armor out of that same material? I don't know. <laughs> you know we're, we're dealing with, you know, the, the, yes. that, that's not the way of the... the the creative folk at right. Lucas went, so right. we're, 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 making some, we're making a lot of this up as we go. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right, so what do we got so far? How about you guys? You got any questions? Um, I've got one that kind of, it, it doesn't relate so much to the, sort of the, the cross guard and what have you, but it's, it's something I wondered whether you might want to get into. 
which is you see a lot of the techniques in a sense coming forward if you use the sort of uh, Japanese katana as an example it's got a cutting edge on one side and not on the other so the, the, the sort of the attacking techniques come fr forward from the sort of the cutting edge side but obviously a lot of the weapons you've been showing have got cutting edges on both sides and I was wondering if there would be instances of attacking techniques where you're actually coming in the opposite direction kind of backwards as it were yeah, well, see, now that's the thing, and maybe you can speak to this a little bit too, is in European swordplay there's something called the false edge. and False edge, short edge. Um, the, the back end of the sword, I mean, when you hold a sword, there's one edge that is predominantly used for cutting. It's usually the one that is pointing away from your palm. Um, you have a little bit more reach on that, um, and it's a little bit stronger. The false edge, the short edge, there are a lot of great techniques that you can use with it, uh, especially once you get into the bind and you start working in close and, and you redirect, and when the opportunity arises, you can do a back, kind of a, a, some kind of back cut, depending on your position. Um, so the application is there, and that's, that's where uh, you know, a, a double-edged sword tends to be more lightsaber-like because you don't have a single cutting surface. You have multiple cutting surfaces to work with. And because of you've got your wrists, your wrists flex, your wrists, <laughs> your wrist flexes, so um, while you only have two cutting surfaces, you can change that angle as you move. You can, you can change the angle that the blade is going to be cutting from. And that kind of that gives us a little bit of a parallel of, of having um, being able to cut from multiple angles on a strike, whether it's it's a regular strike or it's some kind of you know, off to the side, evade, redirect. Um, grab a grab a sword for a second. Yeah. Which one? Do you want no, to just a, a straight sword. Just, just use my my little wall hanger here. So, you know, we, we we get to, we get to one of these positions here. You know, whether you're using using the cross guard or not, all of a sudden. I'm still protected, but with just a little bit of motion, I can turn this into a chop to the side of the head, to the side of the neck. Uh, with a weapon that has a little more leverage, I can make it a larger motion and come down into the, into the collarbone, all with the short edge or the false edge of the blade. Yeah. You can do it too many. So we come into the bind. Let's get away from the not under the girder. <laughs> Down, across, even even carrying all the way past. And here you see what one of the reasons that cross guard is important with the European sword because I I can attack and still be protected against his blade. Did, did that answer the, the question you were looking for, Gary? Yeah, I mean, the, what the, what you were doing there looked very reminiscent of the um, the crate side position in Gem So. Why, yes, it did. <laughs> There's a reason for that. Yeah. This this is a this is a fairly traditional position in European longsword uh, European longsword schools. Cool. Okay. Good. All right, we got a question from Russell Sheets on YouTube here. Um, grabbing the hilt of the other person's um, uh, disarms. Yes, yes. We, we did a whole show on disarms. Yep. Um, so go check that out. But, yeah, let's go through that here a little bit. Um, now, that's a great thing with, with the cross guard. That's going to show you disarms are way easier with the cross guard because you're going to get into the position where a disarm is useful and much safer because you can stay there because you're locked in with the cross guard. So the the, the point of a, of, of a disarm is I'm going to grab the hilt and remember I have to twist it front to his thumbs, right? So I've got to go that way, you see? This way. Okay. In order to do that, I gotta be this close to it. There's only one way I'm gonna get that close, and that's in the bind. Okay. When you have a bigger cross guard, you're gonna be in the bind more often because, well, it's easier and well, it's safer. 
Okay, that doesn't mean you can't do them with a small cross guard. Obviously, you got to be quicker, but there's going to be less wrestling time that you're going to have. Um, with a lightsaber, same type of thing. You're going to have to be quick. It's not going to be as easy because you don't have the ability to force the other person's weapon into a place where they can't maneuver their hands as much. You can to a certain extent. Um, let's let's try it with a lightsaber here. Um, Okay, so I'm here. What I'm going to try to do is bring it up, bring it down, and you see I'm trying to keep my blade against his. I'm now using my arm against his arm. Then I can reach in and pull it out. Now, the other great thing about lightsabers is, is when you start turning it, just turn the blade toward them. You know, oh, <laughs> you know, because well, it's a lightsaber, right? It cuts. It cuts. So here, if I want to go down like that, and then bring it out that way, right? <clears throat> but I can't. I'm not going to be in like this because we can't get in there. So basically, if I'm coming in, if I don't get it, <laughs> I move on, right? I don't wrestle for it, okay? Um, that's going to be one of the uh, one of the things that you're going to have to, to watch. With steel weapons, you can, again, come into contact with that blade, manipulate that blade, use that to your advantage. You can't do that with the lightsaber. There is a point in time in a fight where the steel, the steel, the edge is not a threat. Right. This is all, you know, because talking lightsabers, this is always going to be a threat. Right. Yep. No matter what angle you come at it, no matter how much force is behind it, um, all of that kind of thing. Just to add a little tail, a tail end on to that is, uh, remember that you you can you can do these you can do these kind of grapplings and grabs even without actually putting putting a hand on them. Um, right, and this 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 comes across also from from us from steel weapons. Right, where you, you reach one of these positions where you manage to get inside, and you're using your own weapon and your arms to take control of their arms. Mm -hmm. You can also, as 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 I'm doing, you can you can manipulate their their weapon very. This if if I do this here, he can he he, he can flip out of that. I'm not going to do it because we uh, we got too, we don't have too much space in here. But if I come through here, right here, if I if I really really like throw it through, I can I can disarm him like that, okay? Because I, it's making that same rotation toward the thumb right at that point. Um, I think I think we did demo that. In, yes, in the, in the disarm. We show. did. We did. So go back to the dem to to the demos of the the disarms in that show for. For that kind of thing, that's the kind of thing that's going to definitely be more useful with a lightsaber because you're not going to be able to get that full kind of circular arc with a lot of with a lot of weapon sticks. You can um, that kind of thing, and then specialized weapons like you know twin hooks and that kind of thing. And uh, just specifically for for Russell, since he asked the question, uh, if we have an opportunity to meet up again soon, we can look at some of these you know, close closer in person. I can, Give you some of the more detailed information. Right. Yep. So come and visit us, folks. Yes, we, exactly. We like working with people. Yes, <laughs> and that's that's the other thing. Wherever you're watching from, if you're ever in the uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan area, going to a football game or anything like that, give us an email. You know, we we often hang out at Liberty Athletic Club. You can meet up there, have have some saber and fun. Uh, just let just let us know. But um, anyway. So good. So hopefully that uh, that answered that question. Um, do we have anything else before we move uh, on? It's worth the drive to Ann Arbor. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Yeah. Um, can I just sort of ask one further thing? Yes. Uh, I'm wondering about, um, in a sense, something that probably is, is more of a sort of a lightsaber specific thing, which is weapon destruction. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and, and how that comes in from the sort of the traditional sort of steel sword arts, or if it does, or if it is that something more lightsaber specific. Yeah, there's not a whole lot. 
what we mean is the sunjab, the attack the hilt. Mm -hmm. um, uh, well, easiest way to show it here. This is obviously <laughs> Boronak's favorite go-to go -to <laughs> technique. Right there. Okay. Now, yes. Um, not so applicable with a steel weapon. I, you hit my hilt. That's fine. You didn't hit my head. Um, we could look at it as an extension of strikes to the wrists and hands. Yes. Which there, there's, a, there's a lot of application yep. for that from history. Right. But those, those there's, there's a little more precision um, in those kinds of strikes. Yes. This you can just, if you hit anywhere in this region where they're holding the weapon, yep. that's it. Yep. So that makes that that a very very common technique, and especially, and I think um, canonically they say Makashi was, you know, favored that, and of course that would be the. I don't I don't know that it would be style specific. I would think that would be your go to technique wherever if you had a real lightsaber. Somebody comes at you with a lightsaber. Just destroy their lightsaber, <laughs> then they don't want to have a lightsaber anymore. Yeah, there's a general principle in, in a lot of in a lot of uh, martial arts where if someone has a weapon, control the weapon. Right. If destroying the weapon means you're, you know, if you destroy the weapon, it means you've taken control of it. They can't use it anymore. Right. Yep. So uh, yeah, so that would be that. Yeah, I would say that it's probably more specifically lightsaber. It's a technique that we can have. You can have a whole lot of fun with. That isn't. And the other stuff. So that's something I think that's that's pretty unique to this yeah. to this sport, you know. Exactly. And it makes it fun because it really, 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 really makes you work on your handwork. It's, it's a, it, it adds a adds a, another kind of tactical layer to the game because now you do need to be concerned about about your your equipment. Yes. Um, you, yeah. you know, it, it's you can you you can use parts of the hilt with a with a steel sword in the middle of the fight. Um, and if you do that with, the, with a lightsaber, you no longer have your weapon. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like we were saying, it strikes with the pommel would be okay kind of in canon and for, for, for uh, uh, choreographies and stuff like that. But in a sparring situation, they're not going to score any points, so it's bonk. Yay! <laughs> and then you get hit because you're holding your weapon like that. But um, yeah, so it does add it adds it adds a little bit of difference. You'll see a lot more hand motion, more guards, that kind of thing. For people who are very fond of the the saber staff, the double ended the double ended saber, it's a very real consideration because you've got mm -hmm. so much more real estate that's vulnerable. Oh yes, something that you that, that people who like that that particular style need to be particularly aware of. Yes, if you're looking, we've done a couple of shows. I, we did two on Jar Kai. We haven't yeah. done another one. We should do another one on Saber Staff at some point. But you're going to get you're going to try to line all that stuff up right behind itself so that there's one blade in front of the other one because the more time that you spend with it, kind of out in front of you like that. It's just a target. It's just a target. Yeah. At that point. All right. So let's see. We've got some. Yes. Okay. So uh, we've got a comment here. Matthew Star Wars says uh, the lightsaber is weightless, so there's a weight. Thing. And I think he means in, in in fantasy, not in reality. Now that that is true. Supposedly, this is supposed to be weightless. Right. The, 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 the hilt has weight, but there's no blade weight. Right, because it's supposed to be just light. They did, however, say they were significant gyroscopic effects, which made them difficult to wield. So we can uh, we can analogize that to to weight. We are stuck with polycarp. For now. Oh well, so you know, a lot of people try to bring the the balance way into the hilt and, and and all of that kind of thing. Um, actually, I prefer having it a heavier a heavier blade there for that very reason. Yes, the the the, the sword, real swords are a tad heavier, right? At least the ones we we hit each other with, right? The sharp swords are considerably lighter. Um, it's kind of a myth that they're really big and heavy. Yeah. Um, but when you when you're using blunted swords, they're much heavier. Yeah. About three three and a half pounds is, you yeah. know, just shy of four. 
you know, for that's a fetter. Four, four, four is four is becoming quite heavy. Most yes, people. and that's like, but that's like a fetter weight. Yeah, you know, because that's it's meant for practice because yeah. you're meant to be a little bit more hefty. So the the, the higher end reproduction uh, fighting fighting weapons, sparring weapons, I've seen come in between two to three pounds for yes. some of the really high quality yes. ones. They're they're really much lighter than most people uh, have, have ever really considered them to be. Yes, yes. This is about uh, three seven, three pounds seven ounces, I think. Um, it's and it's weighted just in front of the hilt, right? So I have enough downward pull to bring that through, and that's what I like when I'm when I'm dealing with a heavier blade and a lightsaber is I like that being able to rotate somewhere around on the blade. So that there's more, there's more physics happening, and I'm doing less work. I'm not adding as much force to everything. Um, yeah, the, the the weight of the the weight of the blade helps you helps you guide it, helps you drive it, provide helps provide power, um, helps you right. provide helps helps you focus where the in, focus into the point of impact. Right. So yes, t yeah. In in the Star Wars universe, they're not supposed to have any weight per se. But they do have something that you're going to have to to wield, and there's there's some sort of physics they're going to be fighting you. You can't just swing it around like a flashlight, right? <laughs> it would probably be too dangerous. And it's I mean, without without being able to actually practice with a weightless blade, yeah, we 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 can't teach anything that's directly relevant to that. Yes, unfortunately. Um, okay, I don't know. Do we got anything else here? Uh, nope. Okay. Right. So, <clears throat> let me see. What else do we got? We've got guard techniques. We've got disarms. There's a lot of emphasis on uh, using lightsabers with two hands. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, you know, we, we, we see some people who are, who are using one-hand techniques frequently, and, um, but most of the time, you know, Everybody's out there with two hands. It's got a fairly long grip. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a wide assortment of historic weapons that were one-handed weapons. Mm -hmm. You generally just, that, that, was, that was how you followed. Yep. Uh, ranging from early broadswords, uh, regardless of what continent, um, in towards uh, small swords, back swords, um, getting up into contemporary sport fencing weapons. Um, and I, I've I, I've seen most of the emphasis on light say on, on on lightsaber being two hands. Um, when you start getting into people who really, who are really keen on Mikashi, then we start talking about uh, kind of the dueling aspect. And there's whether whether it's the approach that uh, we've taken with it being closer to the John or mm. the kind of the, the predominant opinion, which seems to be it's more like uh, European fencing. Um, now we're now we're back to a, a, a small smaller hilt assembly, um, one-handed, and historically, um, two-handed we two-handed weapons against one-handed weapons, um, it was it, it could tend to be a little one-sided depending on on what you had available in that other hand, if anything. And so I I I, I, I had an idea a moment ago, folks. I'm sorry, but I completely derailed myself <laughs> in my monologue here just now. Um, but uh, the, there's because most of the forms um, have an emphasis on the, on using a two-handed lightsaber. We we sometimes uh, don't emphasize a lot of one-handed work. Right, and this something should be pointed out when you're moving from if you're if you're if you're if you're using this with two hands, there is going to be a predominant edge. Okay, most of those techniques can be directly taken from single-edged weapons. Sabers, katana, you know, that type of thing. Um, true double-edged stuff, you get into, you start getting into a little bit of finesse. And that's where the whole Makashi thing comes in. Whether it be European or Chinese or whatever, if you're, a sword is a sword is a sword is a sword. I'm sorry, you're not gonna, you're not gonna find anything really different. It's just gonna be, just little flavors here, here and there. Who cares, right? Um, we don't when we're in in Shisha, we're dealing with 
the three strikes, right? So we've got these things kind of going on, right? And then we've got kind of this. But you notice that most of these attacks are coming from the side, right? So I'm swinging because swinging is a little bit easier. There is shiak, right? But there's not a lot of emphasis on that, okay? And I think shiak is just included because it's obvious, right? But most of the stuff is going to be swinging, right? Coming through here. Okay, so we're always kind of doing that. When you get into a double-edged milieu with the weapons, is when you get in, in our in our system in Makashi, you're dealing with one hand. Okay, now you don't have a lot of power when you're doing this with one hand. Okay, you don't have as much. Okay, so you're not going to do so much of that. You are going to kind of go here. But if I've got now one hand, I have the ability to stand all the way behind my weapon, like this, so that I can kind of stay away from what's happening. You know? Right? So if we're here, right, so I can, I'm just coming in through like that with, the, with all of the guards there. And you see, and this is where this is uh, we get we get asked a lot. Makashi attacks. Well, give give us some Makashi attacks, right? There's only one Makashi attack. Attack. Hit him. That's it. The rest of Makashi is the game of getting him open so you can hit him, right? And then it's just reach out and touch him. You're not doing anything where you're trying to sever arms or split them in two. You can go ahead and throw those little things in there, but you certainly don't need our permission. Right? <clears throat> what you need to do, though, is you need to remember that when you're dealing with one hand, you're dealing with different physics, different, yeah. different things that are going to be happening. Right? So that's why the guard system. Okay? The guards are not ah, trying to block. Right? But if I bring this up, you see, I'm going to try to keep my point towards him. Right? Like that. Okay? There's going to be a lot of coming back and forth. Okay? There. If he's two-handed, right? Now, I'm not going to get into a, into a bind with him. Like that, one-handed, that would be that would be foolish, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my yeah my I'm going to get I'm I'm going to use my advantage, which is the mobility, right? I can bring my sword all the way around and keep keep this right at him, and this is where I start getting my opportunities for those strikes there, right? I can keep my arm away, moving it, making sure that it's it, it, it's 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 a it's a moving target. It's not just sitting there waiting to get smacked, right? We don't want that, <laughs> obviously. Um, yeah, we want to be able to keep training with our partners, right? So we don't want to do what we call like one-handed chicho. You can do one-handed chicho. Right, where you're still doing the slashes, you're just doing them with one hand. There are different things that you're going to do, but if you're going to use with one hand, you have to understand that there are things you're giving up with that. Right, and in order to do that, you usually have to make alterations to the way you fight. Those alterations, collectively, we we call makashi. Right, and that's essentially what it is. So it's a it's a a uh, I don't know, a, a, a variation of Shicho. It's an evolution of it, a continuation. Yeah, which lines up with can description. Um, right. And also happens to fit nicely into what has been built here at PPLA. Right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, that got you, man. Let's see what we got here. Uh... Yes, he's saying um, 
basically uh, that you also have, even with the polycarbonate blade, and that's probably something that is much different than, than the steel. We haven't noticed it, per se, but it has different aerodynamics, right? Um, one of the ways we can tell we're doing a cut correctly is because it hisses through the, through the air. We know that our force is going along the same line as our blade, and that's cutting through the air and making an audible hiss, right, or whoosh, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and then we, we kind of understand, we know that our, our position is good and all that kind of thing. It's also the, 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 the construction of the hilt is, is it, it, it isn't just, it isn't a round tube, a, right. a, a regular sword. You can hold it and you can hold it with your eyes closed and tell where the edges are. Right. Yep. And um, with this, you're going to get the whoosh any way you do it, right? So I don't know if you can hear that, but it's whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. That's right. a sound card. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, if you have a sound card, then it's all over. Um, who knows what's what's going on? Um, so yeah, so that is that. That's definitely a good point. Um, is that the aerodynamics of the blade going through the air might give you a kind of gyroscopic type of effect? I, I think overall, the uh, it's it's not going to have a significant impact on how you on how you play or fight. Yes. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Yes, and we also yes a uh, comment there about uh, real swords being heavier than practice or being lighter than practice swords or blunted swords. And if you think about it, um, the re really the the only real reason blunted swords are heavier is because there's more steel on them. When you edge when you put an edge on there, you grind you grind that down, and that creates a thinner blade, uh, you know, more like an I beam. And, and thing like that. So that's where you get the fullers and you get all these weird blade shapes to try to really control that. That And that's where blade geometry, when you're dealing with swords, comes in so much. What, which, do you like the diamond shape? Do you like the flattened diamond shape? All this stuff. There's all that kind of thing. We don't have that. We just got this. But yeah, so practice weapons, often a little bit heavier than, 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 than real weapons. So that when you're out in the field, the idea is that you don't get tired as quickly and, and you're used to <laughs> carrying a, a heavier weapon around. Right, but you know, we're, and still, we're talking about a, a weight difference of less than a pound. Yes, it's it's not hugely significant. No, no. Um, not 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 for most most purposes that I, I can envision them being used for. No, <clears throat> no, unless you have something that's really badly weighted, those little. Changes in weight will probably make a big difference, but it's, 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 it's more about the the balance. Of yes, the weapon, it's, the it's of the weapon. and we've always told, we've always said that here. It's way more about the balance of a weapon than it is about the weight. You know, um, they don't need to be that heavy. They need to be solid, and they need to be well balanced. Um, and you can you can get this, and when you're when you're the, another great thing, but as we finish up here, probably one of my favorite things about lightsabers is that they're customizable, right? Um, you want a longer hilt? Well, you can create a longer hilt, right? You want it to be a little bit lighter. You want the balance to be over here. You can tailor all of these little specs exactly the way you want them with this. Go to TCSS, start taking out parts, go to Ultra Sabers, get an MHS compatible one, make your own, wh whatever you want to do. But you get to customize your own weapon, very much like in the old days, where you had a weapon that was for you and only you. There was no, there were, there were mass-produced swords, but, you know, a real, once you got your sword, it was your sword. And the the other element of that is you can order you can order a sword, and if there's something about uh, about the balance about about how it feels about the weight, you can change it, which you can't do with one of these uh, yeah. that we that we have right. had here today. That, yeah, this is what you get. Um, you you can you might be able to stick some washers in it somewhere to to change the weight a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's you know, it's hard. It's hard. You can't make the blade any longer. You can't. You know, you can cut polycarbonate blade exactly the length you want. You might be able to like tape the handle to add a little bit more weight or shave right. it down, but that's a, that's a one-way ticket. Yes. Yep. That that's that's the other thing. You have to destroy your weapon to to, to alter it that way. 
Um, these can be taken apart, reconfigured. Um, and so, yeah, that's, that's why we love them. And they light up. <laughs> and what is better than that? Okay. So, uh, anything to finish up here, guys? Last minute questions, thoughts, comments? Sounds like a resounding no. Yes, I guess not. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, okay. actually, uh, Matthew Star Wars uh, says that it's a shame that we can't use Tricotta, um, which is uh, the act of letting it go and then starting it up when the blade passes and having basically a wide open hit if you can dodge the other person's blade. Yeah, uh, that, that, that's that, that is the idea. Um, it would it would have very very limited use in reality because it goes on the premise that when people are swinging their swords they're going to swing and they're 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 expecting resistance. I'm not when I swing at him I'm not swinging at his weapon. No. <laughs> well, here, here. So here we are and let's say yeah. and now I turn my blade off here and uh, I try and pass through. Well, the problem is he's actually. You know, we, we, we aren't just trying to smack the swords. Right. We are trying to hit each other, and it just so happens that that attack is also what we're using to defend ourselves. Yeah. Um, you know, if, if someone is, is, is just standing there, and, and, you know, and you're, you've been swinging away for a while, and all they're doing is blocking. Yeah. Well, okay. and I'll, you, you could take advantage of it there, but some, you know, it's... Yeah. It, it, yeah. The it, 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 it's it's a it's a nice uh, it's a nice concept for a uh, for choreography or for a story, for, right. for for a story element. But the reality of the situation is, if you're swinging a weapon at someone. Generally speaking, you are you're you're yeah, you're, going, yeah, you're swinging you're, you're, for you're trying, you're trying you're trying to hit the person. Right. Generally speaking. Right. Um, so like even when you're trying to manipulate the the weapon, like in Makashi. Right. If the weapon goes off, you're in a guard. You don't have to move. You're you're not overly committed to anything. That's what guards are for. Right. You can launch attacks from them and not not give it up. A, a guard a guard is a transition between attacks. Right. Or parries or whatever. Right. But it's 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 these it's the dots that you connect essentially. Okay. It's a neat concept, but. Yes. Okay. Um, well, I guess that's that's almost at the end here. Do we have anything else from the interwebs, fellows? I don't see anything. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we're coming up. We have stuff yes. happening soon. Yes, we do. We do. In um, not this Sunday, but in a week from Sunday, we've got our second annual Seven Form Symposium. We've got some cool guests already lined up. Alan Block from Golden Gate Knights who's been on the show before. Uh, Hugo, uh, oh, I forgot his last name. Oh, well, but from Ludo Sorry. Sport, Italy. Um, the, if you've seen those Force Clash uh, videos, and, and they're all those people. So. These, are, these are amazingly active. Yes, yeah, so very, very active. They turn awesome. it into a big sport and everything like that, so we'll get we'll get the skinny on that. He'll be in, in that. We're going to be talking about the very much like stuff we'll hear. We'll probably bring stuff like this up. Um, reality and fantasy, what works, what doesn't, what's what's good in reality and sucks in fantasy and vice versa. Um, and we'll we'll try to figure out that. We've also got a couple of other special guests waiting in the wings. Hopefully they'll work out. I don't want to spoil anything, but uh, we'll see. Uh, okay. Um, so, yes, I guess that that's that. And then, of, of course, remember, October begins the Oakland application period for the uh, – LX program for our learners in exile. Um, so uh, we've got a event page on Facebook. Go check that out. Uh, join it um, if you're interested in going out and wait for instructions. For that's where it's going to be at. If you don't have Facebook, check in with our website, and um, information will pop up there uh, probably around October 1st because that's when the application period starts. Okay, do we have anything else going on? I don't know. I think that sounds about it. Okay. All right. Well, 
from everybody here at uh, TPLA, uh, have a great weekend. Uh, happy sabering. Thank you to our panel uh, for, for joining us. Uh, thank you there, out there. And uh, may the force be with you. Happy sabering. Yeah.